one sec. Um, the first branch of, of the aorta in the abdomen. That's called the celiac trunk. So we're going to put it like that. That is the start of our celiac trunk. And I may not have given enough room here, but I'm going to go ahead and try anyway. Um, this can get a little confusing without the organs, but I think it's also important to think about it without the organs. Um, so we've got our stomach. It's going to run like this. So one of the immediate branches that the celiac trunk is going to give off is the left gastric artery. Now it's going to come around and follow the lesser curvature of the stomach. So you got the stomach right here and we'll draw that in later. Um, the other important part is, or sorry, one of the immediate uh, vessels coming off is the splenic artery. And that is going to follow a tortuous path all the way to the spleen. Um, and that goes all the way over there. Um, you have the spleen that's up against uh, basically the rib cage, uh, ninth to the 11th rib. And uh, that's on the left side of the body. And that goes behind the stomach. So the stomach is still right here, uh, anterior to that splenic artery. So the other branch coming off the celiac trunk, that's going to be our common hepatic artery. And there's a lot of things that happen here. So first we're going to make a little turn up here and that becomes the proper hepatic artery when it turns up here because it also branches down this way. So we'll get here in a second. For now, we're talking about the proper hepatic artery. That's going to go up and give the left hepatic artery and the right hepatic artery. And if you'll notice, that looks just like our right and our left hepatic ducts. So those are all kind of going to be in the same area. Um, and just as the ducts went, so goes the arteries. So we're going to give off a little sister artery here to give our little gallbladder just a little bit of blood. Now there's one more branch over here. This is the right gastric artery. So that's going to flow down an anastomose with the left gastric artery. So those fit within the lesser curvature of the stomach. Now, on to this area. This is called the gastroduodenal uh, artery, which makes sense because gastro, you've got the stomach, and then duodenal. So right here, you have the duodenum coming off. So this is going to continue down, and it's going to branch down here. So this is going to be called the right gastroomental. It's going to follow the greater curvature of the stomach. And I know I didn't leave a whole lot of room for the stomach in here, but imagine that it's bent. Um, this right here is about where those divide, the left gastromental and the right gastromental. The left gastromental is actually coming off of the splenic artery, and they meet up here in the middle, but they follow the greater curvature of the stomach. So one more branch over here. It's the superior pancreatico-duodenal artery. Quite a mouthful. The reason is we've got the pancreas right in here, and we've got the duodenum in there too, and it's supplying both of them. So pancreatico-duodenal. Got a few more things up here. So our splenic artery gets all the way to our spleen. It gives off one more branch that we're really concerned about and that's the short gastric arteries. So that comes in to supply the fundus of the stomach, which is the big bulge up here superior. And that pretty much covers, um, oh wait, I forgot, the supraduodenal artery. 
is another branch that comes off over here. So that pretty much covers the important arteries in the liver region. It's a celiac trunk, so that's going to be supplying the liver, supplies the gallbladder, supplies the stomach, the pancreas, the duodenum, and the spleen. Um, so let me go ahead and crudely draw in those organs. So over here, we've got our gallbladder, and then we're going to have our liver, which I guess that kind of, let me, okay, there's our liver, um, here is our stomach, which is not going to look right. But let's call it a stomach, just for funsies. Uh, over here, you've got the spleen. Um, I know I'm at the edge of the screen. So like I said, this is left gastromental and this is right gastromental. They're providing branches the whole way. Um, and that's how the stomach gets all of its blood. Okay, so the duodenum, and this is not quite right because the duodenum is going to like come in. Um, let me redo that. It's going to go around and then up, around and up, and then you have the pancreas in here. It's just going to shoot. The abdomen is super crowded, so drawings tend to get a little uh, crazy. So that's our super duodenal. Here's our, as you can see, the pancreatico duodenal. So here's our pancreas, here's our duodenum, supplies both. Uh, the right gastromental supplying our stomach. Um, gastric, hepatic supplying the liver, the cystic supplying the gallbladder. So all of those names make sense. Um, I'm going to do one more thing that's really important clinically speaking. So let me go ahead and get this color up here. Um, we are worried about the omental foramen. So let me go ahead and redraw some landmarks. Our liver right here, our gallbladder, and Go ahead and draw the stomach. So, one thing I didn't talk about really was this um, hepatoduodenal uh, ligament. And that is this ligament. It connects the duodenum to the uh, liver. So traveling within that is the bile duct, the common bile duct, the hepatic portal vein, and the hepatic artery proper. So all of those things that I drew going to the liver travel through here. Now, an important thing, it's called the omental foramen. And that's a little space that goes from here into here. And it's hard to get that, this relationship, even with, with good drawings. But there's a space, and the greater sac is out here, and the lesser sac is in here. And those spaces are important. Most of the stuff is the greater sac, the omental uh, sac. This is called the lesser sac or the omental bursa. And the reason that's important is it is possible for uh, fluids or other things to get trapped in there. So like one important relationship is that if the stomach is pierced posteriorly, so posteriorly, it's going to leak into this space. And the only access point is through this omental foramen from the general abdomen. 
So that's an important point for that. So we went over the visceral surface of the liver. We went over the ducts and the arteries uh, in the area. Uh, we talked about the portal triad, which is what is going through that hepatoduodenal ligament. And then we talked about the omental foramen, which is leading to the lesser sac, um, also known as the omental bursa.